News Flash is brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel. Fun pa 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 fee. Hi there. Good morning if you just join us here on the show. This is Prime Morning. It's time for News Flash. Proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise from Papa Pathier. We're going to get into our newspapers, the front page, and check out what has been reported, and then we'll move on to our substantive issues that we've told you earlier. Now you can send your messages ahead of time and let us know what you think. You can do so on our social media platform. We're streaming live on Facebook, on uh, IG. You can also follow us over there and share your thoughts with us. We are also, uh, you know, open up on our WhatsApp line. You can just join us over there with your thoughts. We'll be more than glad to read from you this morning here on the various issues that we're talking about today. A big thank you to Franco Trading Enterprise this morning. Uh, it's the leading mobile phone accessories and electronic retail shop. It's uh, the place you have to be if you're looking for quality and not uh, quantity. Now, yeah, don't forget that a lot of people out there are, you know, looking forward to making changes when it comes to their phones, when it comes to their fridges, when it comes to their CCTV cameras and all of that. If anybody tells you they want to make a change of a sort, make sure you direct them to Franco Trading Enterprise. That's the only place they're guaranteed quality and that's what we're talking about. So you can also get an air condition from there as well. Now I'll tell you some other you know goodies that they're giving out in a couple of minutes but please do not pick any number from Google to call and do business with Visa Scammers. Uh, take this number that I'm giving you and always make sure that you call these two numbers 0246 422338. is the number you can call, and also 0555 933 These are numbers, the only numbers you can call Franco Trading Enterprise on. Our website is www.francotrading.com, and you can also get the Franco app on Google Play Store as well. So it's pretty simple. That's the only way you can connect with us, all right? So thank you so much for always believing in us and making us number one. Franco Trading Enterprise says, from Papa pa News Flash is proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Now we're going to go to the front page of the newspapers. My guests are seated in the studio, and then I introduce them real quick. Then we'll move on to talk about our major issues for this morning. Now on the front page of Daily Graphic, it says, GJA 75th anniversary launch journalist must be fearless, says Sir uh, Sam Jonah, and uh, he's been captured on the front page of uh, Daily Graphic. Ministry invites proposals for Saglemi housing project. That's also captured on the front page as well. I will inform first uh, representative government in nation's history, Alan Pledges. That's the front page of the Daily Graphic. Away from that, Daily Guide is here this morning. It says, four caged over missing EC equipment. Uh, you see, Boris June message be captured on the front page. Tamale Daily Delegation visit uh, Musta to strengthen uh, ties and also in our point, new accountant general. Let's support women, says uh, Baumia, and a man remanded for Robin Egg, uh, second lady. That's also captured on the front page of Daily Guide today. Away from that, the Ghanaian Times is here and it says uh, nine party alliance for revolutionary cha uh, change to contest the 2024 polls. Alana Cash leads the pack. That's on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. So Works and Housing Ministry invites BIS to revive a Saglimi Housing project. And it's got Dr. Joe Pong and Kroma, the minister, captured over there as well. Two UK museums return Asante Royal objects. And uh, President Akufuado Asante in a inaugurates key energy projects in the Ashanti region. That's the Ghanaian Times uh, today. Away from that, the new crusading guide uh, this one also reporting on Alan. It says Alan fights for AG and Supremo woodworkers threatening face off with concession and crochets. Uh, that's uh, on the front page of the new crusading guide. Dr. Sam, uh, says Sam Jonah uh, challenges journalists to uphold truth, independence and accountability. And uh, Jabosco NPP communication team commends government over new cocoa price and focus on women empowerment for inclusive development, uh, says uh, Dr. Baumia to CEOs. Now, KGL thriving on good corporate relationship with Alice Zappel has been captured over there and leveraged trade to achieve development in Africa's uh, agri sector, uh, says uh, Dr. 
Adwini Kesi. That's the new crusading guide this morning. Away from that, let's go to the new finder. And it says, I will inform a truly representative government, says Alan, and Asantene urges government to allow private investment in the ECG grid called VRA. President commissions 150 megawatt plant to stabilize power supply in Ashanti region and RFP for Saglime issued, uh, inviting private companies to complete houses, says uh, uh, the minister. Now, that's the new finder for today as well, and that will be the front pages of the various newspapers we have for today. I would like to say a big thank you again to Franco Trading Enterprise for making us uh, possible for us to have our conversations here on News Flash. Uh, you are invited to also send us your messages. Let us know what you think about the issues we're talking about. The IMF is projecting a 4.4% growth rate for Ghana in 2025. That they are looking at this year, and this year they are looking at the 2.8%. Uh, what are we supposed to do to ensure that we achieve this? And uh, are we ready? to make that even happen as a nation. Now we'll have a conversation around that. And also, uh, the drivers implementing the 20% increase in first, we believe that uh, we're supposed to have had uh, some communications on these uh, issues. But uh, well, the Concerned Drivers Association, PRA, is saying that they've already implemented it uh, way before. And we'll have a conversation around that as well. My guests in the studio this morning, as always, uh, have over here the Honorable Alexander Pesidal Sagbethia uh, joined us uh, this morning as a lawyer and former Minister of Health uh, representing the NDC uh, with me this morning. Honorable, good morning. Good morning, KMJ. I trust you're good. Um, I'm good, and uh, good morning to my colleague who you're soon going to introduce, mm -hmm. and uh, also to your cherished viewers and listeners. Great. Thank you so much for making time for us. We don't take it for granted. And also, uh, joining us this morning, lawyer Kwame Jantua Esquire. He's also here. So I've got two lawyers in the studio this morning, and uh, am I not blessed? Mm. <laughs> He's a senior member mm. of the CPP and chairman mm. oil and gas uh, sector, AGI. Good morning, sir. How are morning. you doing? How are you? Kim? I'm yeah. very well, thank you. Good, good. good to see you. Yeah, we are breathing, so we are alive. So we are alive. <laughs> Alex, good morning. <laughs> and uh, both of you, your best friend is here to join us. Last time you were somewhere at the car park. I'm not too sure okay, where he is. Okay, <laughs> okay, no comment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> when he comes, I'll tell you, you made a no comment comment. Oh, when I mentioned him, I'm But sure. just to say, mm. driving in the morning, mm. coming here is like having a gauntlet. Mm. There's so many heavy trucks on the road yeah. this morning. Yeah. No street lights, no road ma yeah. marking. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Yeah. It's awful. And we pay street lights. Mm. So, so, sorry, viewers, for always no, complaining it, it, about it. No, we have to. You know, we it's, have to. it's something else. And people are speeding. Yeah. That's what... In the early mm. morning. Yeah, boggles my imagination. People are speeding. Mm. Mm. And that brings us to our Light Up Ghana campaign. I mean, we've asked you to send us messages. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you keep uh, also sending your messages and letting us know what is happening in your areas. The street lights, the traffic lights, uh, these are, you know, things you're paying for. We're paying for as a nation, and we need to ensure that they are in good shape. And if a street light has not been working for three years, two years, even a year, even six months, that's a big problem. And so it is something that we all have to collectively take a look at and be part of that so that we let the government know that we can't live in a country like this. It is not possible. Hmm. And if you, if you see, look, look, look at what is on your screens right now. This is deadly. This is Ghana. So imagine that you're driving and then all of a sudden you have a malfunction lights. It means you, you can either not move or you put yourself at risk by driving in that darkness. And, and this is not what we're supposed to be experiencing in 2024. We're promised better life, better Ghana. And if in 2024 this is how our street looks, that's dangerous. You can knock off anybody at any point in time. Any point. Any point. And this is crazy. This and, is our road. And people wear black, black at night. At night. You can't see. And then the cars coming from the opposite side, they are highlights, so it's shining in your eye. It's something else. Hey. And then what do they call those... Uh, People Aboboya. Who, Aboboya, no lights on no. it. And they are going slow. This morning, it, about it, three of them, they it, had no lights. And they were just it, maneuvering their ways throughout. And the ones that take Bola to have HV1. Oh, God. I mean, we don't deserve this. Mm. It's 2024. Yes, yes. We don't deserve this. We deserve this. So don't please, be, be part of this. We want you to be part of this. Collectively, let's let the government know that 
this is not right. Street lights, traffic lights. You have traffic lights that are not working for five years. Some, they repair them in, in two weeks, it's gone off again. Which kind of traffic lights are we using? Are we purchasing? I mean, how? It doesn't make sense. And the entire motorway does not have a traffic uh, street lights working. The entire motorway. And when people put their lives at risk, they're just going out to find money for themselves to feed their family and themselves. And they end up not coming back again because of what? Street lights, traffic lights. This is wrong. So please, viewers, um, let's all be part of this. No matter where you are, which area, which region, send us the messages. Let us know. Take the videos. Exactly. There are things we're paying for. We're paying for COVID. Anyway. <laughs> There's a health minister. Oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> no, this, this wouldn't have been, this wouldn't have been in, your, in your tenure. Wouldn't it have been uh, the case? He, he, he didn't say his tenure. He says that there is a health minister. He knows we are, he knows we are coming. He knows we are coming. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he was no, very no, current. No, no, no. He no, was no. current. <laughs> <laughs> it was very kind. He said there was. Yeah, it says there is. Oh no, you know, once a minister, always a minister. Uh, anyway, and uh, we're glad that uh, Mr. George Kujo is here to join us this morning. He is Director of Communications, not more. And then PP Communication team member joining us here on the show. Good morning, Walker. Yeah, good morning, KMJ. Mm, it's good to see you. Yeah. I, made, I made a comment that uh, lawyer also made a comment. I want to snitch on lawyer, man, you know. And uh, he made a no comment to the comments. Oh, that okay. I, I made actually. Okay. And, uh, I what are you trying to insinuate? Okay. okay. All right, we'll leave it there. Yeah, I will leave it there. I said no comment. That's wrong. So he said no comment to the comment. <laughs> Because he's in the car park. He's in the car park. Look for you. He's in the car park with He's in the car park. Yes. Anyway. All right. It's good to have you, gentlemen, over here. Yeah. These are very distinguished gentlemen, uh, you know, in the area of uh, field and wherever that they've been. And it's always good to have them here on the show. Now, the IMF is projecting a 4.4% growth rate for 2025 and uh, it comes with conditions and the condition is that if we're able to stick to the conditions they have given us we'll be able to achieve this but are we ready as a nation to go uh, by the conditions to ensure that we're able to achieve this 4.4 uh, percent that's 2025 and then uh, 2024 will be 2.8 percent let's take a look at it I, I may as well want to start from uh, the current so <laughs> <laughs> the incoming the current. incoming current. <laughs> as you would like to tell us you know honorable are, are we are we are we no first of all is it even looking good 4.4 rate growth rate well i think that uh if you're taking the growth rate on its own mm. then it's not a bad figure considering where we are coming from mm. because we have a 2.2 projection yeah when you go into negative figures then it means you're in recession mm -hmm. so on the face of it we are not in recession at 2.2 and we hope that in 2025 when we come into office we will be at about four point something percent the emphasis <laughs> but i want to make the point that if you look at growth rating on its own it's not a good indicator of where we are as a country for our problems, what you really need to be looking at is also, and very importantly, your debt to GDP ratio. Yeah. So the growth rate is more about your revenue or your incomes and how that is moving. But how does that juxtapose against your debt to GDP ratio, especially when you're not paying your debts yeah. and your capital is still standing there and you don't know how much interest is on it or not? And then that gives you a better feel. Because even if you have a GDP ratio, which is, or your debt to GDP ratio, which is over 100%, but by virtue of the taxes and the revenue you collect within your system, it's much higher, you can pay. Mm. Then it doesn't become a problem. You, don't, you won't even be talking. Nobody talks about the American debt to GDP ratio yeah. or Japan. And they have high debt to GDP. But you look at then the growth rate and their revenue stream the figures they are playing with. And you realize that they can service their debt. Mm. But we can't service our debt. In fact, we are bankrupt. We've declared ourselves bankrupt. We are in junk status when it comes to the money, money market. Mm. So if that is the position, it's a nice figure 
but it's not the real picture. It, 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 and it's, it can draw you into a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. But we are always knocking at the door of disaster constantly because of our debt portfolio. So it's a good figure to have. It's good to know that our, our revenues are going to increase. But we are not paying our debts. Mm. And we are in a bad place when it comes to, um, we are still negotiating on our external debt yes. portfolio. So that for me is where, as a country, we should be looking. But in terms of international economics, it's good that at least we are not moving to the projection is that we are not going to go negative. Mm -hmm. We are going to go positive in terms of from two point something to four. None of which is actually the best. In a country like Ghana, you would hope to see something in the region of six and seven percent, mm -hmm. is, is what I would say. And then you know that actually you're trying. And if you get beyond that, then you're in a good place. So That's for example, nice. yeah. So you will notice that the, in Ghana now, they always tell you uh, your rates with oil or without. <laughs> <laughs> You, you understand? Yeah. And when you have a new oil war coming on that particular year, you move up very quickly. But if you're borrowing faster mm. or more than your revenue is allowing you to actually pay for, then in actual fact, it means very little. And that's where we are. So our economy is not in a good place because of our debt portfolio. Mm. And we don't even know where we are in reality because uh, by going into or declaring bankruptcy, there's that freeze uh, interest on some loans so that that is not being calculated uh, or not and how much is actually there that we have to pay and if we are still in the 90s or just below uh, for uh, our debt to GDP ratio then we are in actually a very very bad place mm. for an economy like Ghana's as it stands. Mm. Uh, we are losing revenue I, I, I watch that very closely because uh, unless we are expecting to pump more oil or there's an extra well coming, which may be possible, but uh, our revenue for cocoa this year is not going to be very good. And possibly, uh, I'm hoping that the projection is that maybe our revenue from cocoa may increase uh, next year, which will help the, the, the revenue intake in terms of taxes and, and whatnot. Um, so I could be totally mean about it, but... Uh, that's the reality. The reality is where we are, and it, it's, a, it's, it's a one figure, but it doesn't give you the full picture. The full picture is that we are in a bad place. Interesting. Um, lawyer, let me, let me come to you. Uh, um, George will have the, 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 the last say because uh, this, is, this is where he has to make a lot of defense. But <laughs> the lawyer, well, what, what do you make of this? Um, we, we have a lot to deal with. We all know our, our debts and all of that. But a projection like this, if you're looking at it, you may want to say, yes, the reality is there. But if we're able to do well for ourselves, we, we can get better. Good morning to our viewers. George, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't to roll. <laughs> for the records, I... I you, you see... You okay, see, I, he has I, an explanation. No, no, no. You see, he has an explanation. Just keep quiet. He has an explanation. I'm holding you. He was on the car park. He wants to explain. Yeah, I got him there. Last week, I was there. This week, he was there. This morning, he was there. I'm telling you. What impact does the growth rate have on the general atmosphere of the country. Mm. You're looking at economic prosperity. Yeah. Are we saying by that time, things like um, the levels of production, income, and employment would have gone up? Mm -hmm. We're looking at standard of living. Would we say by 2025, the standard and growth of living would be good? Would we say that? Investments. Are we saying that we're going to be able to open up for investments to come in. And if investments are going to come in, where is it targeted? Mm. Where will those investments be targeted? We look at government revenue. What are the sources of government revenue? Mm -hmm. huh? And is there going to be any reduction in poverty? In the past, where we've had increased growth rates, has it affected poverty? And that, that is a key thing, because you're not only talking poverty in rural areas. Yes, yeah. There's also <clears throat> urban area poverty. So, international competitiveness, are we going to be very competitive? Because, you know, I heard yesterday, 
that it's possible that a new tax will come in from ECOWAS with regards to they trying to put infrastructure mm -hmm. in place, so good roads, internal connectivity, railways. The ECOWAS are doing quite a lot in terms of taxes on imports, but they want to do taxes on exports mm -hmm. from countries. If that comes into being, how does it affect us? Now, you then ask the question, what are some of the things that stop us in terms of reducing poverty, in terms of economic growth, in terms of standard of living? Um, uh, uh, lawyer Alex. Uh, Alex, Alex mentioned a key one, debt. Are we paying our debts today? Our debts have been transposed into 2040, mm. which now become an arbitrage on our neck. Any government that comes in should make sure they find money to pay the debt. So if you have an increased growth and you haven't taken that in consideration, how do some of these impacts help us? Then you look at unemployment. The rate of unemployment, is it slowing down or is it going up? And what is the kind of employment we are talking about? Mm -hmm. Is it the kind of employment where the turnover in terms of salaries are high? Mm -hmm. Or is it a kind of employment where, okay, you are probably a hairdresser and you are training and you are being paid a minimal amount of money. That really can't make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Or you are a trader and you're trading and the cost of your currency keeps going up. And so it affects you because the exchange rate is determining how your currency works. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about, yes, I talked about that. And then your revenue intake. Is your revenue intake based more on taxes? Or is your revenue intake based more on the, your natural resources? And if it's based on your natural resources, what can you do to make sure that those natural resources are gaining more than exporting whole? Mm -hmm. So if it so happens that with our cocoa, we are adding value, we are doing coverture, we are doing uh, cocoa powder, cocoa uh, butter, and we are exporting more of that than exporting beans. Will that increase our revenue? And if it increases our revenue, does that affect our growth rate? So there are dynamics in there, and I don't want to sound, oh, we are not, we are not going to be able to get there. Mm. We might be able to get there if we take into consideration the nitty gritties of some of the impacts that would help us get there. If we don't, then a growth rate of 2.9, a growth rate of 4.4, yes, it might probably help, but it will not stabilize the kind of standard of living that we want. Mm. Uh, one thing, too, I want to find out, I'll, I'll come back to you, is the other aspect of the... It's not, it's not impossible. Mm. But it depends on how we handle exactly, it. Exactly, even from the conditions yes. from the IMF, yes. that's but, what that yes. states in there. While you're going to him, I would like him to also address one factor. You see, it's a projection. Yeah. We projected more before we came to the two point something. Mm -hmm. They had projected a higher figure for 2024. Yeah. Yes. And that's it's been revised now to two point something. So the four point something is a feel good factor, assuming you see it's, it's an improvement. Mm -hmm. But when it's revised, where will it be? Okay. So it's a projection. Mm. Let us all be clear about it. It's not. So we may likely even it, come down if. It can come. Yeah. And, and, and they say it can go up. And then go up. And then go And then go up. 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 Are they taking it from the past uh, projections? What's the arithmetic that goes yeah. in there to get these figures? Mm. It needs to be understood. Mm. Very well. Um, George. <laughs> yes. Uh, good morning to the Honorable uh, former Minister. I, I wanted <laughs> to keep it that Minister. He knows it, but he, he's pushed me to go there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, he, he's taken his point very clear. He comes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and lawyer Gentia, good morning. Good morning. Uh, 
Unfortunately, I'm in black because I lost my uh, younger brother over the oh. weekend. Oh, and, oh and, so and I I So I, I wow. So tired, my dad. So I overslept a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the, the yes, excuse, the excuse yes, is here yes, now. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, the IMF projections, uh, as, as you said, feel good and others, but we, we, we confronted with the realities mm. of the hardships. When you were even talking, you touched on one critical thing that I thought uh, is a bother to all of us, the street light matter, all feed into yeah. the economic growth and yeah. other things. Uh, the GDP growth is very important. But this government, as of now, you know, on the IMF programs, we are meeting the benchmarks and the targets that we're doing. Uh, we've got in the French the second. And the third, we need to uh, renegotiate or get the, the capital market investors, or, you know, to agree on, on rescheduling our debt. It's part of the DDP, right? Uh, so, how, and, and that seemed to be one of the most difficult uh, engagement that we're bound to have before we get the next tranche. And, and negotiation is, is, you know, already ongoing. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand it's one of the most difficult ones uh, we need to get at because investors on the capital market are not going to be uh, reducing or saying, okay, we cut off this and all that. It's going to be a hard negotiation. Uh, and so the IMF definitely is factoring that in. Don't forget the World Bank had projected that growth was going to be about 3.3% by uh, 2025 uh, from the 2.8, 2.9 that we've had going forward. We, we, we agree things are difficult. But uh, Honorable said we are not paying our debts too. Uh, but the other positive side of that too, he knows, is that if you are not paying your debts and, and you cut down on your expenditure, there's the possibility to reinvest some of those monies which otherwise mm. you would have paid to your creditors uh, in your economy for growth uh, trajectories. And, and that is a possibility. That is if, if you are prudent with your expenditure, you get it. And so... Uh, is, is that a case? Uh, why not? <laughs> you, you, you are not I, I, paying now, it. It's there. Many, many so, of the positions that have come have yes. always been around cutting down our expenses. Yes, yes. Which that's, has always not been the case. That's, oh, that's no, 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 we did. No, no, no. Pep, pep, pep. No, last year, yes. Have we done that? Yes, last year we cut down expenditure. Expenditure. Yes, yes. Is that what we did? Yes, last year we did. I know he's aware. He's aware. No, we did it last year. Over 20 billion was cut of expenditure cut in last year. You can glean it from the budget for two. 20, uh, 24. Yes, over 20 billion. When we said we're cutting down on uh, the uh, coupons and all those things, mm. our, our is that thing that we're, we're experiencing? Yes, now. and then we had to cut down on some, you know, road projects and go. You saw that we, we stalled some of them and all that. It's to realign our expenditure and be sure that we are meeting the expected targets or agreed targets with the IMF. You get it. Otherwise, the second tranche, there was you, you saw there were some delays yeah. and some difficulties. We had to uh, get them convinced that, yes, we've done A, B, C, D, and we are on course with the blueprints that we've agreed on. And so those are part of the uh, things that help us to, they, you they, know, they, they, that Did that affect the, 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 the number of governments? you know, the people the government is using to run the... the, the oh, no, no, yes. Did because, we have... The, yeah, the, the but that has been a major concern. See, no, there has been you a know, concern. Let's, let's cut down because the there's media. so much we can gain. We, we did, indirectly, we did cut down the numbers. You know why? Mm. Because of the 30% uh, cut of revenue. Yeah, re, um, so it's some salaries. Some, some, yes. Some, some, some so if, yes, if we are creaming from all of us, uh, that 30% of our salaries yeah. is going to be uh, taken out, yeah. away. Indirectly, it's like cutting down the numbers from maybe 80 to about 69. Mm. Really? Okay? No, 30% expenditure of your revenue is taken out. What mm. does it mean? Mathematically, it translates to numbers. What is the right? quantum of people yeah. we're talking about? No, no. We, if we're talking about ministers. So now, now we're around. We're talking ministers. <laughs> yes. We're, we're talking ministers yeah. over 80, right? Yeah, now we're yes. around 80. Yes, over. So what, what does it mean? 30% of each of all these people's salary mm. is going to be taken away um, you know for the sake of economic management and then uh, living uh, what a uh, prudent life to, to mm. assure the Ghanaian that we are tightening our belts okay so in monetary terms it tells you a certain number of ministers it will translate to a certain number of ministers who otherwise 
if we had them getting paid yes for. yes you no, we couldn't it. have done better with the number your, oh, your no, no. Taumia is projected no for 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 he is projected 50 we couldn't have done better uh, uh, maybe his excellency it to 60. jm is pushing for 60. yeah we could uh, have, done, out we that. have done 60 uh, that, that or around crazy. around oh no no now for the aesthetics it's, 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 it would have been good if if we had done that yeah but, but the president also believes in these difficult times you know he needed more hands to execute some of the challenges uh, duties that we have had to implement. That's just, that's just about a few months. Yes, yes. Yes, so... That even, number couldn't that, yes, the last number couldn't even, handle even, this for, yes. for eight months. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying, <laughs> that it translates, you know, if there's cat fire, it translates. So uh, let's be for the beauty and, and carry the nation along. Mm. If we had taken that step, it would have been the best. That, Absolutely, yes, because we, we've got eight, eight months 80, or so to do this. You know, we've moved so from 50, 80, 15, a number yes, of 50 is taking yes, care of eight yes, months. Yes. I don't think that would have been... Yes, well, uh, <laughs> that's another <laughs> conversation. <laughs> that's another conversation. But uh, the projections, uh, I think, are real because we are uh, on course. Mm. Uh, for now, if, if you speak to the bondholders and co, uh, the uh, dividends are being paid uh, consistently, even though it's been... Uh, not the we're actual, not going to see any yeah. protest. Yes, no, no, we, we, we don't expect that because where we are now is the capital market. We finished with these uh, ones, and there's been agreement. So what it means is that we're going to be meet. And and you spoke about revenue. Yeah, it's key in in meeting these things. Uh, Honourable, uh, they talk about our debt. You know, this morning on your uh, sister station, uh, Joy News, uh, they were looking at the projection hitting about. 84% by the end of year, debt to GDP, mm. uh, which is still high. You get yeah. it high. We, we, we've been able to uh, come to around, I think, 71, thereabout. Uh, but of course, the computation is excluding some expenditure, which our brothers and uh, the minority disagree with that kind of com computations. Uh, but the IMF didn't have a problem. But even though they allow us, they also do the, uh, the, the holistic computation and gives us if it were all put together, mm -hmm. this is where you are. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at possibility of hitting uh, 84, and then inflation hitting around 19%, okay? Mm -hmm. Also from your uh, sister station. So uh, these are some of the projections. So when we meet these targets, and the revenue thing, this budget, 2024 budget, is made projection. Now we are hovering around, I think, 14% uh, tax to revenue, mm -hmm. uh, uh, GDP, uh, this thing, we anticipate to reach 18 to 20 percent, <coughs> between 18 to 20 percent by 2028. Okay. Yeah, you get it. Not 25, by 2028. So that's the target. And so what it means <coughs> is that we are gradually going to inch up, you know, to 15, 16, 17 by then. Mm. So by 2025. That will require a lot of work. A lot of work. And, and <laughs> that's why Ghana Revenue put up uh, uh, these pilot projects that incidentally created some problem. Mm. Because the feedback, when they, they take people to sit at the shops to, to look at the cash flows in the, and, and the uh, market people, the traders were not too happy and comfortable with that. Yeah. You get it. And, and, and they, didn't last they because, complained. I mean, yes, they, yes, they complained. Bad. And that's why His Excellency, yeah. the Vice President, made the comments he made. It was a feedback from the traders that they are not comfortable with that, okay? And so the term harassment was yeah. used and, and the revenue people were angry, you know, that that was said. But it was the feedback we got from the test uh, with the revenue agencies conducted. And so if <clears throat> we'll be able to push that and we'll be able to cut down on expenditure. Uh, KMJ, one, this government, I've said that this government, uh, some of the challenges is not about mismanagement or incompetence. It's about our decision to add more revenue or expenditure items to the structure of our economy, which hitherto were not there. Okay? Mm. Free SHS, for instance, was not part of our expenditure. Teacher training, nursing training allowances were not part of our expenditure. Ketsi, His Excellency JM, okay? In, in 2025, 20, 26, they thought it was uh, a needless cost. Okay, we reinstated it. Uh, this uh, 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 IPEP, okay, uh, one constituency, one million, which is created the Coastal Development, Middle Belt, and then the Northern Development Authorities, okay. These were expenditure items that hitherto were not there. 
this government has decided to bring it on board. And so if you do that, what it tells you is to raise your revenue, increase your revenue, because, uh, because you thought you have access to the capital market, and now that you have rated junk status and you don't have the capital market access, what are you going to do? Are you going to cut down or stop some of them and then uh, get your revenue aligned so you'll be able to prosecute But, but that is crucial. Yeah, no, 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 no. Fortunately, no, no, no. Fortunately, no, no. Do you know what? Fortunately, budgets that were non calculated. No, no, they were calculated, but they were not uh, expenditure items on our budget. Yeah, but, budget. but bringing in but we now in. brings another yes. problem. But fortunately for us, no, that. no, fortunately for us, the IMF has agreed that it be sustained. Okay, mm. you know, people were saying once we go into agreement with the IMF, there's the possibility that uh, the free SHS and some of these things will be uh, cancelled. Mm. Because there were social protectionist projects or programs, the IMF thought go ahead with it. In fact, they even taxed us to spend more there. You remember the electricity issue? The IMF, in, in, in mm. some of these things, he's here, he knows what I'm talking about. They said, look, we cannot allow you to quasi uh, subsidize electricity yes, for any consumer. You get it. Mm. Once the ECD, they sell the power, they must be able to break even or maximize some returns. Government shouldn't be taking money and putting in there. They would rather government uses that money to support social programs and policies. And so that is what uh, is good. That's how come you got to a point there was some slight increment in electricity so that would meet the ex projected targets, okay, of revenue that would be raked in and then bridge the gap. Uh, E-Levy is not doing as well as we anticipated, <laughs> okay? Go there. Go there. <laughs> it's not doing as well as we anticipated. And so, yeah, these are all... Oh, no. All these things. But let me run up. Hold on. 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 So you've got to do it. So I believe, yes, I believe the projection of 4.4 uh, it's, it's, it's attainable. It's, it's attainable because of what we have been able to do. And, and if the projection of 19% or less inflation this year is achieved, then of course, uh, 2025, uh, it, it is possible. It is possible. It is possible. All right, very well. Our news flash is proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise, Fong Papa Pathier. You can go on our social media page, and please, when you go there, you can only engage with us, but don't pick any number from Google or anything to. Uh, you know, uh, deal with us. Just call our numbers. Now, if you're looking for phone, uh, we're talking about iPhone, Samsung. Uh, if you're looking for a television, uh, we've got the biggest inches that you can get. And also, those of you out there who need air conditions, the place you have to be is Franco Trading Enterprise. And we're giving you quality. And trust me, you would love those project, uh, products that we're selling to you. All right? So just give us a call. Uh, the number is on the screen. 0555 You can call us uh, and do business with us. Uh, Newsflash is brought to you by the Candice Kedisi, Franco Trading Enterprise. Honorable, you disagree. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he agreed with you. That's one small point. I totally convinced. <laughs> oh, <what's> that? <laughs> that one. <laughs> the most hard or the most difficult job to do in Ghana now is to be a defender of MPP policy. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> My brother was uh, in trouble uh, <laughs> trying to explain the situation. Uh, <laughs> and in some cases, he was even digging holes. He was sliding. He was, you see, because you see, when he went down the road of expenditure, mm. you asked him some questions and he, he tried his best, yeah. but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't convincing. To <laughs> <laughs> you see, if your incoming flag bearer, yes. or your flag bearer now yeah. is your flag bearer, he's not income, he's a flag bearer. Who wants to be a president? Who is a vice president? Yeah. He's telling all of us that he will have 50 ministers. And it's possible to run, run. the country with that. And you have your current <laughs> minister, you as vice president, you are at 80 something. Mm. Does, it, does it make sense? Mm. So if that is good, why, why not now? now? Exactly. Because one of our biggest problems is expenditure. Yeah. So if you, you are saying, oh, we cut salaries, with the cut salary, why didn't you know I'll keep the number? Because I've cut salaries, so there's no need for me to move yeah. to 50. Yeah. 
Or was it because John Mahama said 60, so he has to go down? It's almost as a reactionary statement, mm. as opposed to a really thought out process. And when he spoke, it made it clear that they didn't have a plan. Because if you say you want to do all these social interventions, and we are all suffering because of those interventions, yeah. what was your plan when you were making those interventions? Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why we have a problem with the MPP or Nanado's government is because of the lack of integrity at the moment that they have. We don't trust them. Mm. You see, till the IMF came, all the figures from 2018 or 2019 to about 2022, we just should just pick them up and put them in the garbage can. Because when the moment the IMF came in, our debt to GDP ratio shot from the 80s mm -hmm. position to over 100%. Because of this underlying uh, reporting that they were doing. Mm -hmm. They will report something and say, no, this one is not part. It is a, a separate debt. And they said, it's a debt you owe. So when you decided that you were doing all these hoodious calculations, <laughs> and it came to the fore, we now all saw the, the length of the frog. Yeah. Because now the frog the, was the dead. real state uh, of the situation. <laughs> you understand? Mm. Because we didn't, we kept telling you that this, your figures are not correct. And that's why when people are talking of growth rate, we don't trust their figures. Because they always have a way of calculating it, which is not. So why is it that if the IMF came, they didn't leave their below the line, below the line. Mm. Yeah, and they decided to add it and tell us that our debt to GDP ratio is over 100% now. And that we are now working to come to this. I'll explain, so, I'll explain. So, yeah, so for me, the whole uh, position of his figures don't make sense. He then also said that in order for the president to be able to work with the conditions that we have, that's why he still kept the 80 something. But that was the same story we heard when he said he's in a hurry. So he wanted 125 ministers. Your rush has put us here. Because you were rushing to nowhere. Mm. We, could have, we could have reduced it. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yes. Where are we? Mm. We are all suffering this rush. We are all suffering it. And you yourself realize that you have to, if it was good, keep the 125. If it was good, mm. it could never... The de look, the decisions made were wrong and they were poor. And we are now playing catch-up. We are all suffering it. And you are talking of... So, what, what use is your social interventions if the person cannot take public transport? Mm. If the person can, doesn't have enough in his pocket to move? Mm. If people have, are, are not feeding well? If we cannot clear common drugs from the ports to help our people? This is the reality. Mm. So for me, I'm clear. I hear him. But he's struggling to convince me that we are in a good place and that the previous, all the re after seven years, you have no Mahama to blame on. Yes. You have no one to blame for I where blame we are. Mahama. I Your people are. <laughs> small, they, everything Mahama. After seven years, it is all in your, in your pocket, in your basket. And gun, every single macroeconomic indicator is worse mm. than when we handed over government to you. I was looking at the pound to the CD rate. That's for now. And then do And I was like, ah, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> you know, and you're going to go to the next topic about transport fares going up. And so when we are in that type of a position, that is why the flag bearer of their party is in a total mess. Because he doesn't know whether he's, he can defend his government position, which he's part of. Mm. Or he has to say that he's coming with totally different policies which are more in sync with what NDC is saying. Mm. And he is in government, he cannot do. Mm. Some he has been bold to, even that comes with consequences, but I'm sure that's an internal issue that they will deal with. But, I mean, looking at it, I look as if that almost everything that he's saying is, is towards what we are all uh, looking at, you know, yeah, making... Yeah, making apart, apart, as, apart from that, yeah. domestic borrowing yeah. this year has gone up by 21%. And we haven't looked at the impact of corruption and procurement. So you might cut the salaries of ministers, 
However, mm. when you look at the corruption index and you look at procurement, that is where the challenge is. What have we done about it? Mm. Look, you showed uh, a map of yeah. the growth in, in the world. Africa, the entire Africa, last year was 4%. When you consider the quantum of natural resources we have, we are a population of 1.4 billion people compared to China, who I'll say in size, okay, we can compare in, in a bit, they are 34%. Mm. Because they've been able to do what? Add value. They've been able to take their people out there to bring money back in. They've been able to invest in other parts of the world, which is bringing income in. And they have a viable tax system. Exactly. That exactly. is part of the revenue. So you see, where have we where we've gotten to? And I keep saying this, and probably the NDC and the MPP might not agree with me. We've got to a place where some of the issues are national. Where we should take politics out of it. Mm. And be able to sit together to get certain solutions that will catapult us forward because there's always going to be a change of government. Mm. And based on that, we can move forward. But this bit where, okay, I'm in, so I'm doing this, so you don't have to, a part of it. Then you come, I change, this one comes in, this bit do, then you change. That's not help any of us, especially where we stand today. Domestic borrowing, banks are prepared to uh, lend to government. Mm. Why? It, they feel it's safer. Mm. But they should be lending Today. the private sector to pick up that side. Because if the private sector is doing well, it reflects on government. Mm. But if the private sector is not doing well and they are not getting money to handle their businesses, how do they increase your salary? Mm. How do they increase my salary? How do businessmen feel that the, the, the economy is, 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 is getting better so we can bring in more investment, we can do more things? So it's, it's a situation where we shouldn't feel that because we are in power, we are doing X, Y, Z. We should feel that because we are in power, we should try and bring others on board to see how we can sort some of these things out. The energy situation is a national issue, complete that national be. issue. That should be. That should okay, be. MG, yeah. if, if I may explain. No, no, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll okay. come to you. Okay. Can, can you. Can I do some few messages? Oh, if I maybe. finish, then you, are, you box it in. I no, you're going to take a look at to do this. <laughs> oh, no, maybe no, some, I won't take much. Maybe some of the comments are comments no, you want no, to no, address. No, 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 maybe even this. Okay, so please do that. Oh, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. But it's our MP. I've not read the one of them. The debt to GDP that the IMF computed. It had to do, for instance, um, it's not b b below the table figures. It's, for instance, Ghana Water Company, mm -hmm. uh, Electricity Company of Ghana, Great Coal, those establishments. The IMF said, okay, when the banking sector had that difficult challenge, the back stopped with the government. And so, in the event of any challenges with these state institutions, the back will stop with you. So, put their debts on the table. So we we'll do the computation. That was not what the uh, calculate how the calculations were done prior to you know the twenty uh, this thing. Institutional debts are institutional debts. Okay, so that is it. So and the IMF negotiations, mm -hmm. Ghana Water, ECG, all those VR, all state institutions and their debts were put on the table. Okay, that was the conversation. Yeah, that's what pushed it to the over one hundred and three percent that honorable spoke about it's, it's part and and what's there below that this thing is there because the imf has not uh, uh uh disagreed with us completely yes he's right sometimes they do the computation they box all up sometimes they agree with us that okay the banking sector reforms and co were not things that we uh, uh, anticipated or envisioned secondly uh, honorable and the ndc they speak as if we are in the normal times that we were when they were in power Post 2020, okay, mm. the world has been completely We're going different back to COVID? because of yes, they are parts. Mm. Russia, Ukraine, COVID, you cannot discount them. Okay, the honourable did say. Are doing well now. Yes, America they are picking right up. Yes, has been but they are targeted no, but they are as, 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 as the country and, that is going to strengthen and, our growth. And, and, yes, and, but and, and, that is just two days ago. Because that was the, are, the dollar, the dollar is the global currency. Okay, that's how come this government is building our gold reserves. 
going in the future, how it's going to help show up our currency. This is something that we Yeah, it initial economics. Like yes, over that's over been, over the, yes, yeah, the store of value is the gold. Mm -hmm. You get it. But the world has, that's why China and co are saying they are now going to come together, Russia, and, and ignore the dollar so that they can also build their own currency globally. Uh, another one, we didn't rush to nowhere, Honorable. We rushed to somewhere, <laughs> OK? We rushed to somewhere. Which uh, is? The which is building the industrial sector, what do you want? Of 167 of them, 150,000 plus jobs created, mm. opportunities created, and, and road construction under them over the eight-year period. You know we had 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was in the serious. That's the mission. That's the mission. You get it. So that, that is important. And, mm -hmm. and him, you know, road construction, almost 12,000 kilometers as against 4,700 kilometers. It's, it's something that uh, uh, we need to, to, to look at. You get it. These are things that have hit us. But fortunately, uh, we're building back better. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is how come the IMF is making those projections. So there were things that were put on the table. There's real achievements uh, that is helping people in all sectors. And we need to encourage that to continue to build that. And that, and that next year, definitely, uh, we may begin to uh, pay our debts. I did see that what we are not paying will be reinjected into the economy to build the economy, okay? Uh, that, uh, our GDP is, is in excess of over $70 billion. Yeah, we, we, you get it. We've taken it to 2040, every year, 2040. <laughs> yes, 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 so we're building. So we're going to... So, uh, no, no, so that gives you some, the space, the breathing uh, space yeah. to be able to... Yeah, the, the, yes, but, but and the last one, and, then again, and, future, future, uh, and the last yeah, one, the recent, the recent sense, uh, sorry, uh, Ghana Statistical Survey on, on Unemployment, mm. people, they did something, they said that, number of people who come onto the market, the last this was about 440,000. And of that, about 60% of them got job opportunities. So the numbers are there, but they are being, you know, absorbed. absorbed yes, in the gradually, way. yeah. So that is what is more progressive and, and tells the young people that the opportunities are being created and giving the chance, a breaking the age chance, they will get more opportunities. The interesting and, part uh, of this is the fact that... We have left that. you because you are bereaved. You are bereaved. You have left you. But if you bring yourself, we shall put a finger on side. The interesting thing is that um, we always have this conversation coming up in terms of unemployment. And there's a way that we're made to believe that things are better. But when you walk on the street, like yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, lawyer was saying, yeah, yeah. the situation is I'm always different. Yes. <laughs> I'm running from home. It's always different. The people feel that they're they 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 getting thoughts of our viewers at the Benin Telephone Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, you know, to do what we do over here. Franco Trading Enterprise is the place to go. Uh, they've got uh, 35, 32, they've got 55 inches for you. You can always get, and uh, if you're, uh, you know, looking at what we're doing over here with this very big screen, it's very, very nice, all right? You can get that at Franco Trading Enterprise. Now, let me get your thoughts on uh, some of the issues we have discussed so far. This one says, good morning, Mr. Hose. Hmm, as for me, I just don't understand my people. Though. Every time we keep on discussing the same issues for the past 20 years and the results is zero. On a more serious note, you guys feel less power and until all of us start behaving like uh, bastard boys, Ghana will not move forward. Let's see the Christ-like in you, guys, please. Just join Alpha Hour and stop sleeping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so bastard boys are a group of young men who are on the streets and what oh, they do is they go to places where there's filth and then they clear it up. Oh. I mean, they've been doing this for a while. It's a Good volunteers. thing they're doing, volunteers. Oh, yeah. You know, they don't get paid for anything. But if you see what they do, there's places they go, they entirely change the whole place. And they're on, on social media. So I think you, you should check them out and, and see how we can, you know, speak to them. Oh, is that possible, though? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Okay. It's, it's a good... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they're doing amazing yeah. stuff. Now, this one says, good morning, Mr. Host and your panelists. It is my harmless appeal that you use your media to let the general public... And the government know that teachers who always try to build our human and labor force are not fairly treated. If a teacher who has taught us to become who we are is treated badly, then there is no hope for Ghana. Once a teacher 
is uh, treated badly, he or she will not be able to deliver effectively and efficiently, and it is the nation who loses. Ghanaians are not seeing the impact of teachers. Journalists are not speaking for teachers about the bad treatment by various governments. We need vocal people like journalists to spread our pains and uh, agonies uh, with uh, we teachers are going through. Only God knows. It is uh, a cure. It's a cure to be. It is a curse to be a teacher, or bad to be uh, to become a teacher. A teacher who taught uh, these politicians is earning a small amount at the end of the month. It's a pity. Um, you sound like a teacher, but you didn't add your name to it. Uh, please do well and add your name so that we're able to know where and who is behind that. Now, good morning, my brother. This NPP government is the real definition of corruption, failure, lies. Mr. Sami Jemfi told Ghanaians in 2016 that they should not sell their color TV for black and white. We thought it was propaganda. Now we are feeling it. Uh, Solomon Zenumati Luther sent I disagree with you. I disagree with you. This says, good morning. Uh, I think I've read that. Uh, from Honorable Akismes, so I should be quiet, before he comes to attack me, let me read it. It says, good morning, my man, KMJ, good morning, my brother. Uh, so NPP plans to hike fuel prices all the way to uh, 23 uh, Ghana cities per letter. Uh, good job creating uh, GRTCC and bringing some sanity to public transport fares. It was obvious driver unions were taking undue advantage to increase fares way above corresponding fuel prices increases, uh, making a dire economic situation even worse for the citizens. The transport fare, uh, too, is being treated like doom so under the corrupt NPP government. Meanwhile, the poor passengers uh, are already paying for the new increments on the transport fare. Uh, they are behaving like they are not in the country. Uh, that's Honorable Akisme uh, in session of the sent in that one. So the PR has been talking and... Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's not happy about it, but well, that's what is on the grounds. Now, the recklessness and competence and the sheer mismanagement of the Nana and the Baumia government has brought us to these economic crises. Mm -hmm. uh, these people, while in opposition, spoke as though they were angels and would turn this economy around, given the opportunity. They went to the extent of touting Dr. Baumia as economic whiskey, uh, who can change our economic fortunes within a year. Today, Ghanaians have given them the opportunity they have been looking for, and all they can do is to engage in blame games and needless propaganda. Tell Georgia EC to reserve his energy. The incompetence and the level of dishonesty exhibited by this government is inexplainable. Mm. Uh, Daniel Apaliok from Sandima sent in that. <laughs> <laughs> John, that was for you. Um, hi, Mr. Host. Moving the Ameri Power plant to Ashanti region is like robbing Peter to pay Paul. This is another grand scheme by NPP to buy vote from their stronghold to the disadvantage of the Western region where the plant was originally located. The people of Western region must vote wisely because Akufuado and the NPP have no respect for them. NPP never again because Ghanaians it's cannot be fooled or scammed <laughs> by any vote buying schemes this time around. Powerly, a citizen, not uh, a spectator, sent in that. Uh, let me go here and see who we have. It says, what the NDC should know is that no NPP minister has taken double salary as some of the NDC ministers did. Uh, fear the NDC. And that's Ajiman Boati. That is from palpably the false. <laughs> <laughs> it's false. The double salary <laughs> issue... I beg your pardon. The double salary issue cuts across. So he shouldn't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it happened. It happened. Under you? No, that's under right. you. That's oh. No, it was under you. <laughs> Alaji, I'm sorry, big boss. Good morning, my brother. Like but you, your name wasn't in, so it's, ah, it's not that's... bad. <laughs> I am so sad this morning, and my heart bleeds for the nation. What actually took place yesterday in Kumasi was so shameful, to say the least. Hope you remember the construction of the George Bush Motorway president before starting in, it man. and left power. <laughs> the NEC came to power to, and continued and complete the project. Uh, president Kufo was invited as the guest of honor to grace the occasion by the late President Mills. Yesterday, President Muhammad's name was not even mentioned, mm. but rather the occasion was used to call him names by the energy minister and the president himself. Truth be told, the NPP as a political party has no shame. Remember, become, uh, because of this Ameri plant, former energy Kobinat Donko, uh, Kobinat Donku, Donko, 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 you meant to yeah. say, and other members' uh, house was invaded by the BNI. A delegation was even sent to Turkey to investigate the issues surrounding this plant, and nothing good came out from that. Yesterday, the occasion was used as a fanfare uh, for the NPP to make it look like something new has been brought to the uh, to uh, uh, brought by the president. And this was nothing but just for vote buying in Kumasi. But I'm happy uh, the good people of Kumasi can read in between the lines. NPP as a political party. 
but he has no shame. And Honorable Alexander Sebefia, I salute you this morning. How do you know that the uh, Kumasi people can read in between the lines? How, how do you know that? You, you think they're not excited about what has happened and they will leave it at that? Uh, Blueprint writes from Esikado Ketane. It says yeah. the former appointee of Eswa Mahama administration and CEO of Maslok, Sednam Tamaklo, was found guilty of conspiracy to steal, stealing, causing loss to public property, money laundering, and uh, causing financial loss to the state, amounting to 90 million Ghana cities. Uh, the alternative is scary. Greetings to Honorable Charles BCU, the incoming MP for Esika oh, oh, So, <laughs> this, this message was just basically. To, uh, okay, I, I'll come back and read some of the uh, messages that have come through. But you know why I said see. that? When, when you read some Honorable. Pointed at you that this is for you. Okay. So now you guys are doing. <laughs> Is, is it 2-1 against, uh, or is 3-1? I think so. <laughs> you got about three. Very well. Now, a big thank you to Franco Trading Enterprise for uh, giving us the chance to do this. So please locate them. Uh, we have got branches over here in Accra, Kumase. Make sure that you get into any of our branches. If you need an iPhone, a Nokia, Samsung, smartphones, uh, smart TVs, if you need it, tabletop fridges. We've got Franco Air Condition for you as well. All you need to do is to call us on 555 939311 and also 024-6422-338 uh, and speak to us. Download the app. It's Franco Trading app on Google Play App Store and uh, visit our website www.francotrading.com and uh, do business with us. Now the good thing is that we're giving you 40% discount on all accessories that you buy from us and some other phones that you buy from us, you get a 40% discount. Um, Anyway, speaking about the fairs, and um, I, I want to start with you because you may be uh, leaving us very soon, but um, we have this that we want to take a look at. And uh, when we come back, I'll take your thoughts on that, Honorable. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> Fuel prices, no, a costra. I'm not happy. Many interested about the uh, fair, no, say, be a be increasing fair, no. A bassana, na a man near my day, I had a matimem of one because any panel or quack of fan near my or better knock a moon, I had a quack of fan near man. And he said, yet, yet, or no, no, fair, no, never a year, dear, or coffin near my bar. Yet, my mufuan on sono, a hot rebede, a beba. And according to me, dear, me not interested about, sir, ye betu lolly fanim. Oh, sir, or more two fans, no, dear, you may be an also like Obia Yuzuka, because we miss me tom phones. To be tough one, or to make us all, me for my delivery gun on from Breno. There's an amoto gun, so back as I also did the atoms because they are two events, four of them. They are also a cost of Kakra. And I'm so me phones, so maybe we got to so because. So I delivery now or be out of some so some to me there so send away I will go shame more. A petrol musa a hand and mabi free. And penny for me I say I'm sorry, no more that sorry, no, no more so we increase in your mouth. I'm on Jay Tima Mufon Hoka crack. Oh, and my transport to know a head in sa not affect your business, no. A high be beer, can be beer, and tell you so almost say. Yes. It's, it's very it's very difficult because as a student that I'm here in Ghana, it's very difficult because we have to get some money to transportation every day. Before it was lower, but now it's very expensive. So this is affecting us. I don't know what's going on. We don't have any explanation. Yeah, we don't know. And we are suffering too much, especially with that we are not Ghanaian. We don't have uh, sources to earn something, and we're just depending on what we are getting from outside. And it's so, it's so, so difficult. 
about the transportation fare. So here, by, because I'm living at Alajo, from Alajo to Cycle, like the transportation in out is so, so expensive, you understand? So all those things you must, like the government must think about this and then help us. We are here as a foreigner, we are not working, we, are, we, ju we just came here to, to learn, you understand? We also increase the price because uh, as far as the fuel rise, if we do increase the price of our business, our business it will affect our business. And so there's no, we have to also increase so that the last consumer have to bear the risk. Mm, it affected you uh, as when we take uh, two liters, you can work as long as and get a lot. But now when we take two liters, it will not take time. The amount you get at the end of the day, it will not reach. Well, I've, I've experienced it a couple of times. Uh, maybe two or three times, I can say. It happens usually um, when it's getting late in the evening and then you are trying to get a car and then it becomes scarce. So um, the bus conduct uh, conductors may tell you uh, before you go, you have to pay an amount of 10 CDs, which initially they used to charge 5 CDs, but they've increased it about uh, 100%. So you have to pay. If you, if you don't pay, you won't go. Sometimes I, I might go to school and then save some money for transport. So if, if, if uh, the money is not enough, I have to call home for them to send me money for, uh, for another transport. Actually, um, when the place gets choked, okay, the fee is increased from the normal price. It's increased. So let's say I, for instance, I come from Ofanko site. The normal price is five cities, but immediately the the place gets choked. They, the people get crowded here. They increase the fare to ten city, and it's very very disturbing. From five city to ten city is too much. It's too much to bear. I I don't blame them because. All right, some views from uh, passengers, you know, commuting from different places, speaking to us on how the experience has been like in terms of the transport fares, and uh, that's our next conversation this morning. Let let me begin with. Um, Personally, I want to begin with you. You, you do, I'm sure you do. Um, <laughs> I think that... Uh, I didn't understand the word you said. Oh! <laughs> That's oh, funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was very careful. Uh, 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 I think there are two issues. Uh, and we shouldn't mix the two. Mm. One is uh, exploitation of demand and supply principles. Mm -hmm where when they see, uh, uh, because of the limited number of cars at a certain point, people then increase their price. Yeah. Because people want to get home early or there's not enough buses. That's one aspect. The, aspect, other, the, the thing that I think we are discussing or should be discussing is, look, what are the official rates for these journeys? Mm -hmm. And what are people, what is the increment and why is that increment taking place? I think that there is a formula and a process by which this is done. But the fluctuating fuel prices are not helping matters. Because one minute, in one month, the price drops, say, 20 cents or whatever. The next month, next two months, is bumped up 40. At that point, people are screaming for an increment. Then the next month, it drops a bit. And they say, why have you increased? Then it goes up. But if you, so you have to look at the median, the average. Mm. And the average is that it has been going up relatively for a period. Yeah. And so some increment is definitely on the cards because the taxis and the trotters cannot keep absorbing. There are people who have to go and pay their masters mm. money. Sales and all. Sales and whatnot. <clears throat> they will make the sales mm. because if they have to go and buy fuel at that cost, they have to work late into the night to even take the car back and give the sales <laughs> and have nothing to even get back home mm. themselves. Or risk losing your job in exactly. the first place. Exactly. So we have to take a realistic approach to this matter. If government is saying that fuel prices have gone up and they are in negotiations with the transport people, 
they have to really listen to what they are saying and the hardships that they are going through. Mm. They did it with the unions and the TUC. Yeah. When they looked at their wages and whatnot and said, look, based on inflation and what is going on, we must look at it. If you just look at the fuel price, oh, fuel has gone up, therefore, you miss the fact that they live in Ghana and they also have inflationary issues that they have to deal with. Mm. So the people are not just raising price because just the fuel alone has gone up. Their cost of living has gone up. Mm. So they, are, they, they want to increase the fare. That will give them a remuneration, like the workers everywhere else who are screaming for increased wages, to cover not just the cost of moving my vehicle in terms of fuel, but I should also, at the end of the day, get a wage that makes it... Because uh, even if I increase it to cover the fuel, and I was earning 20 cities yesterday, last year, and I'm still going to earn 20 cities. And inflation is at 20 something odd percent. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Mm -hmm. So you have to put all this into the basket when you are looking at what the transport uh, uh, unions are talking about. Everything is going up because of inflation. Mm -hmm. With this Iran. Israel issue, mm. that whole area is becoming volatile. Mm. And it is definitely going to have an impact on the world crude oil prices shortly, unless some stability is reached. Israel is talking of retaliation. We don't know or what is going to happen, or whether people can speak to people so that thing. But once things begin volatile in that area, moving oil tankers from A to B and whatnot yeah, becomes so all of a sudden oil prices rise, Nigeria's revenue becomes very good again <laughs> <laughs> for them because they can pump out yeah. and send out. Venezuela starts doing well. Ghana, we have a net uh, difference in terms of what we import as against what we produce. Our oil is very good, so it's got a good premium price. But having said that, we actually buy finished products yeah. because our refineries are down. So had we been in a position to actually refine and use some ourselves and give out, we would have been able to do a better combination. I don't know how that would necessarily help us this, uh, if that goes up. But we shouldn't be looking for higher oil prices. It will affect everything, mm. as we know in the past. So mm. um, I, you can't blame the transport yeah. operators. They are, they are going through their own hell. And government must negotiate. They must go to the table and speak. Um, and it is important for the MPP to understand that sometimes when you are shouting, when you're in opposition, I've been quite decorous in the way I'm speaking. When they were in, op in opposition, they didn't speak like the way I'm speaking. Mm. But because we know we are coming to power, we talk and we have been in power and know what it is. We take our time. Because these are real problems that exist. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> they must solve the problem. You know, I read, you read a, a gentleman's statement talking about, oh, we've been doing this for the last week. Look, there's always a government in power. And we always talk about inflation. We we'll always talk about education. We we'll yeah. always talk about health. Yeah. These are the things, the bread and butter of politics. So you hold the government in power like to account. Government. Period. Your stewardship against what you said you do. That's, so he shouldn't worry about the conversation. The issue is, are we really taking real steps? And start questioning us politicians when we come and make you all kinds of promises. Mm. Question us, why are you saying you can't do this? How? When they were bringing in the 111 hospitals, one of the questions I asked as health minister was, where's the money? Mm. And how are you going to do it? It was a legitimate question. It wasn't based, because in my experience, it was not viable. Yeah. Especially when you put a timeline of 18 months on it said no but it has gone through and people are even talking about this is wrong mm. so we should be holding people should be holding politicians at any point to account based on what we are saying and promising and find out how we intend to do what we say yes, execute those things to. very well thank you very much honorable let me go to you um lawyer jantua and then uh, uh, george will have the last soon according to the um, <coughs> constitution of gp rtu um, they, they need to hold consultations with government yeah. before any uh, 
um, price change. Mm. But they are also indicating that there are huge delays in these consultations. And really they can't wait because <laughs> it's not only prices of fuel, but prices of spare parts also. Mm. Well. The, impact, <laughs> the impact has got to do with how that now translates in food prices, in all the other indicators, because then it raises everything, raises everything up. The question you then ask yourself, does government really have the capacity to be able to convince transport drivers Perfect. to bring their prices down or keep their prices where it is? Do they have the capacity? What's causing the delay for them to sit and discuss these things? <coughs> So it's a challenge that has effect on inflation, has effect on so many other things. That doesn't bode well for the economy. So I would hope that they would quickly sit and negotiate this price because things are going up. And yes, uh, issues around the world mm. are also impacting on, impacting yeah. on it. Um, is it something that we should look at in terms of... So, you have a Chinese refinery in town. They are producing refined petroleum products, aren't they? And these refined petroleum products, how are they supplying those refined petroleum products? At what price? Is that world market price? Why is it that we have left our own refinery and I'm concentrating more on that refinery because with that too, you have a, a, a capital flight. They would want to then also, whatever uh, 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 money we, we use to, to buy their fuel, they will have to exchange and take the money out. So it is a situation that we need to look at and look at quickly mm -hmm. so that drivers don't take the law into their own hands and start increasing the prices, which some of them have started increasing. Okay. It's a challenge, yeah. which we need to handle. Very well. Um, so, uh, George, you do one minute for me, and then we're two minutes for me, and then we're done. So maybe you can, yeah, you can stay. Yeah. Just two minutes, though, George. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I agree with the earlier speakers. Uh, I, I don't think it's fair for the negotiations to be stalled and, and delayed. I don't know what's accounting for that. I think the minister should make the time and meet them uh, because it's agreed that as long as fuel price increases heat over 10 percent they need to sit down and <coughs> with all the factors they've enumerated cost of living and and all that uh, the trans people in the transport uh, industry they're doing business mm. and so you don't need to make them suffer losses uh, whilst we also think about the consumers uh, their welfare and all that uh, because without them making good uh, some good uh, or optimal profits, they wouldn't be excited to be in the business. Yeah. And if they are not in the business, uh, we are going to suffer. You get it, walking long distances to our workplaces, they will come late and all that. So uh, I think we need to uh, sit down with them. <coughs> Whatever uh, we know, that <coughs> exchange rate issues is, is a contributing factor. And, and the world market price, as, as they said earlier, is a contributing factor, and then the spare fast angles and cool. So it's becoming difficult uh, in the transport industry. So let's meet. Uh, Honorable Minister, I'll humbly plead that it makes time to, mm. to meet them and sit down. It's negotiation. You yeah. are not going to, they are not going to tell them to reduce price or increase. We are going to Georgia to say, okay, uh, because of this cost, A, B, C factors, uh, which is a function of the ultimate pricing, uh, let's agree to say, okay, we move it at maybe 7% instead of the 20 you're pushing, or 13 instead of the 30 you're pushing. Then uh, there's appreciable understanding, and we all go back to do business. Very well. it, it, should, it, should, it, it should, even if you want to push it lower, it should work into their arithmetic to make yeah. sure that, you yeah, know, really it, have, exactly, the, uh, exactly. Uh, impact on them yeah. Bring government passes in. Yeah. The first one is if you have government passes, yeah. the prices yeah. are stable. Yeah. So when there's this demand-driven 
yeah. increase where there are not enough. So somebody says you, you five mean, cities become you, ten cities. You mean the electric buses? Yeah, the electric is all. I think it's all yeah, the electric buses. Yeah, because they are pretty much more of a yellow look. The electric buses are parts. Yes, yes. Oh, the electric buses are No, no, no. I say it's the trains. Do do you do you do you have do you have the adequate electricity? No. That's the bullet ones. The bullet ones. You mean the train and then it stops? Power is out. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I will say a big thank you to Franco Trading Enterprise this morning. Phone Papa Pafier News Flash was proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. On a more serious note, it's on Fridays at 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, it's uh, going to be BMPS. Uh, Kofier Ford is going to be with his boys, boys. So they've got a great conversation coming up tonight at 8, uh, 9 p.m. Make sure you tune in. Big Chef Junior is on Sundays at 5 p.m. For Kids Paradise, Saturdays at 12 noon. Step Pap is also coming big and large. Toto Diaries will air on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Do not miss any of that. My costume is by Yofi. Yofi put this uh, political suit for me. And, uh, you know, it looks good. You can call him on 055 Six zero seven five three. That's zero five five eight one six zero seven five three. If you want to look good in a political suit like what I'm wearing, your feet did it for me. A big thank you to lawyer for coming through this morning. Lawyer Jantua Esquire joined us this morning, and also we had uh, Honorable Alexander joining us this morning as well, and my br big brother. Uh, could you also join us this morning as well? Thank you so much, gentlemen. God bless you. And uh, condolences to you yeah, once you. more. I think that uh, Honorable was in the spirit with you. He also yeah, when I saw life. them, yeah, I was like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lawyer beat you to it. Then. I also tried my best. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Franco Trading Enterprise. You'll be, you be the first here next week. Oh, is he'll, it? Yeah, he'll be the first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> coming up next, the CEO has got a conversation coming on uh, what's trending. Rosalind Felly has also got a conversation coming up a bit later. Relationship uh, this morning, we're looking at pastors who uh, somewhat neglect their kids when you know, they're growing up and the impact that it has really? on these kids. And that's what we are talking about our relationship. And we've got some entertainment to wrap it all up for today as well. So there's more coming up here on the show. Do stay. News Flash was brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel. Fun papa fee.